All right, we're live, back on, well, live for us, but not live for everybody else. I always say that. Hey, what's happening, everybody? We are back with another video, Crypto Jumpstart. We got Daniel Rojas from Crypto Reds in Spanish. Links are always in the description in default. They're defaulted in the description. So it's been a while. So we got a lot to t talk about and just kind of chill and hang out and talk. I actually haven't talked to Daniel in uh, over a week, I think, right? Yeah, something like that. And for those of you that are wondering, yeah, I was having dizzy, dizzy spells and lightheadedness and it freaked me out because I'd never had anything like it. And I'm still having it a little bit, but not near as bad. And I started to get, you know, headaches and this and that. And, you know, nowadays, whenever you get headaches, you know, that, that aren't, that are a little bit abnormal, people tend to immediately go, could be a brain tumor, you know? So then I started reading on the internet and then, you know, you start to think about all the worst things. It's like, oh, it could be a major heart problem. Oh, it could be a tumor or it could be, you know? <laughs> and uh, I ended up going to San, San Jose to the main hospital and getting, I've never had it done before. I got a EKG, I think it's called, where they put all these things on you and they check the rhythm, everything. They could see if you've ever had a heart attack because some people have heart attacks and they don't even know about it. They don't even know they had it, you know, very subtle. And then I got a CAT scan, which I've never had either. So I was like, you know, it's a big deal for me to get all that, you know, and I did it all, all in one basically visit. <laughs> Came back, he says, your heart sounds perfect. <laughs> uh, doesn't look like you've ever had anything. You know, it sounds strong. You got a good rest and heart rate. And, and, and the, the, the CAT scan looks clean as can be, no tumors and this and that. And I had to pay all in cash. It was like a thousand bucks for, for the test. And uh, not to get off topic too much, but like, I can tell you, it was worth every penny because just knowing that you don't have a tumor or whatever, and you're kind of clean, just kind of like gives you this whole new outlook, out, outlook. It's like, I'm no longer terminal. <laughs> now I can celebrate life and all that. So, um, so anyways, what it was is uh, he said a, a combination of the nerve problem that I have from all the surfing that can cause some of these side effects and dehydration. Simple as that. So trying to stay super hydrated and uh, basically going to the chiropractor. And then the crazy thing is, is I went to the hospital and I got sick that day. And I was sick for a week after that. I don't know, could have been COVID. I didn't get tested because I went home. But um, a lot of sick people in there were in there and everybody, you know, of course, everybody's wearing masks and all that. So anyways, that's where Crypto Jumpstart went. Um, but Let's jump into it, Daniel, unless you got some storytelling to do. How you been? Well, you know, I I kind of got burned out a little bit. Um, I guess like it's sometimes it's like hard for me to like pause because like sometimes I do like, you know, crypto stuff even like on the weekends and, you know, stuff like that. So I uh, kind of got like really burnt out and like last week, um, I, um, you know, I still stayed home and, and stuff like that, but didn't really like felt like creating content or, you know, getting online much, but yeah, um, we were kind of synced on the, uh, <laughs> on the pausing of, uh, creating content thing for, for yeah, I could hear it in your tone of voice on your message. I could hear it. You're just like, I thought, I thought you were sick. And then you're like, I'm just kind of burnt out. I'm going to take a little break. And I was like. When you get burnt out, it's almost like being sick. <laughs> it's like you need yeah, rest. Like you don't want to, yeah, you, you don't want to like hear from anybody. It's just like, you know, like, yeah, you, you want to just like unplug it. It's like, let's, let's, I, I know quite a few people that are into crypto hardcore, especially because we're in the bull market, right? So you feel like you want to take advantage of it and do as much as you can. And, but then you burn yourself out. But then it's just like, you're like, yeah, yeah, but, but, but I'll have plenty of time to rest in the bear market. So, Anyhow, let's jump into what's going on in the market. So Hex um, took a nice pullback from the high of what, 48, 49, 48, almost 50. That's a pretty big psychological barrier, I think. Just like just like 50,000 Bitcoin, we got a 50 cent Hex. I, I had yeah. said on the last, I think on the last video that I feel like Hex is, is, has signs that it will be slowing down. Now, that's not a bad thing you have you can't you can't continue to do 
what, 4,000 X in a year and a half and then do it again another year and a half. Obviously the numbers behind that just aren't going to work because it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And I know hexagons hate to hear that, but I truly believe that the mad ridiculous gains are going to be slowing down. But I still think that there's plenty of potential gains, but like good gains, you know, like there's ridiculous gains, which almost everybody has missed out on. Like, I don't know anybody that got into Hex that said, oh yeah, I got in at the very beginning and I held the whole time. It's like, everybody's either like, I got in and then I sold too early then I got back in or I waited, I waited, I waited, I waited. And then I got in, I should have got in. So, you know, I think now people are a little bit more like it's more consistent. It's, it's become more stable and kind of well-known. And when, with stability comes less ridiculous, mad gains. It's just the way, it's just the way things work. So I think that the mad gains are going to be slowing down, but you can slow down and still have really, really good gains. And if we do go into the bear market in the next, let's say three months, if Hex is still doing its nice gains through the bear market, great. But, you know, you have a vehicle that can help protect you from these miserable bear markets that we've seen. Yeah, so, totally. What was the, yeah, um, like what is the, what was the low price that it went to? The low price was 33, 33.8 cents. From 48? No, from like, I'm seeing it right here, 53. It's kind oh, of like the wick. A wicked up to 53, so. Yeah, 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 so. That's a good, so that's a good, that's a good pullback if you look from the top down. And now it yeah, looks it's like, like it's kind of, it looks like it's climbing back and it's it's kind of doing what it's doing, but. Um, yeah, that would be a 34% from like 53. I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe this thing will just blast off to $5 overnight, but. I just think that I think the gains will, will continue to be there just because of the way it's designed. But I just think like anything, as it gets bigger, it's going to slow down. It's just the way things work. I mean, obviously, no, obviously we would, we would love to see another, you know, two, 3000 X, but I think that's kind of unrealistic um, in any time in the, in the short term, because if you just do the math on that, it just doesn't make sense. It's like, Oh, you're at a 220, billion dollar market cap what would a thousand x of that be right some some ridiculous number which just wouldn't it wouldn't make sense that it could do that in another year year and a half um maybe in 10 years maybe yeah, in I mean, 15 20 years but that's just how things go startups new things i mean even richard hart said it he says new projects make the most gains you know at the beginning and that's why that's why so many newcomers that come into it, they don't, they're not interested. Like how, how, how often do, do you get new people that learn about the market and they're just like, I want to buy Bitcoin. <laughs> I don't I get mean, that so much anymore. Oh no. Like uh, we were just talking about that off camera that um, people were actually going into Dogecoin before even knowing about Bitcoin or just like, like let alone buying it. Right. It's just everybody knows that Bitcoin has gone up like crazy and that it's, it's, it's got a huge number, which unit bias is for sure a big thing. And so is market cap. Those, those are indicators that people do find important. So how do you, what, how, how do you call Bitcoin now? Boomer coin. <laughs> <laughs> That's Bitcoin crazy, is it's boomer coin. Yeah. <laughs> I, I haven't heard about it until like you mentioned, I was like, so yeah, my brothers, you know, like my brothers, they're all young, a lot younger than me. They start at like 10 years down to like 19 years and they're all into crypto. And then of course my son's into crypto. So I get to hear a lot of like the young, younger generation of the twenties and thirties. Um, none of them, none of them are interested in Bitcoin. None of them. I mean, they all respect Bitcoin, but none of them want to sit there and, and, and get into Bitcoin. And, and Ethereum is even kind of like, because mm, everybody wants to get those, those fast mad gains and they want to be on the hot next new thing. And it's just the way we work as a species, I think, as humans, is we, we want to get into something that's going to be, you know, hot, and new and exciting and 
fresh. And that's why NFTs are blowing up. But even those are kind of slowing down a little bit. And what happens is it just evolves into different types of NFTs, right? So, um, you know, algorithmically, and then there's basically NFTs that are attached to gaming. And then, and then now they're doing like um, all different types of stuff. They're, they're, they're just making them a little bit more complex. And, um, and I think that's what we're going to see, just lots of evolution, lots of evolving. All right, let's take a look at um, let's take a look at some socials to see, and then we'll talk a little bit about um, Pulse Chain and what we. So, how are we doing on the basically the Richard Hart Pulse Chain socials? What kind of growth are we seeing? I mean, there has like last time, what last snapshot was nine days ago, um, but I that mean, we did it last time we, we checked. Did it. Yeah, last time we checked, but so it's like on Telegram, it's like 900, 900 more. Um, but if you look at, you know, the last period, which was five days, like, you know, this period is nine days after last period was five days and it was kind of similar, right? Like 866. Um, Telegram voice, the same. Uh, Pulsion on Twitter, it's uh, a 2,091 in nine days. So that's that's actually mm -hmm. good. I mean, um, Richard's Twitter's uh, three thousand thirty one, like uh, three thousand one hundred eighty two, um, and Richard's Hearts is YouTube uh, nineteen hundred since the last nine days. So so there's steady growth, and that's a good thing. That means that there's you know, and the one thing I will say is, I do pop into the Telegram uh the pulse chain telegram but honestly the majority of the talk in there is just all hex it's all hex 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 almost oh, really? nothing i almost hear nothing about pulse i mean people will be some guys will pop in and then they'll blurt out a question like what's going on with pulse and then then they just kind of get the same answer which is you know oh we're waiting and you know they're resolving the test net should be up soon and uh you know and then back to hex talk and hex 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 and and it's interesting because I feel like you can really put your finger on the pulse to hear kind of the sentiment of the community of what people feel. And I, I hear a lot of mixed stuff in there. Like I hear, of course, the hexagons that don't want to hear anything other than hex is the most perfect thing ever. And it's going to just go up forever and, and you know, and it's invincible to people that are going, you know, I like Hex and all that, but I'm more interested in Pulse because I feel like, you know, the, the, the I missed out. And then there's uh, people in there that have questions, period, and they're, they haven't got into either yet, and they're just kind of interested and they want to get in, but they, um, they just kind of have these questions of what's going on. And then there's people that are kind of into both, you know, but I do notice that I hear the same people over and over doing a lot of the talking. So there's definitely certain people that have kind of taken on, I guess, taken on the position to kind of be in there. But there's a lot of good conversation and there's a lot of intelligent people in there too, you know, and from all over the world, which is really interesting because you got people, I mean, there's accents that I, I don't even know. I'm like, I have no idea where that person kind of sounds like a South African accent, but then it kind of sounds like it could be, you know, from somewhere else. And, uh, but it's super, super diverse. I would say I hear more accents than, than American accents for sure. And, 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 you know, probably 75% foreign accents and then 25%, um, maybe would, which would be either Canadian or American accent. Um, but, um, surprisingly there's the numbers are still pretty steady you know like there's days when i go in there and there's over 100 people listening in so i mean i imagine there's a lot of people doing the same thing because there's a lot of money that people put in there and people want to know where's my money where's my coins so they're just kind of waiting listening for something um which we haven't really been hearing a whole lot from Richard Hart. You know, we've been, I know there's people on the inside that maybe know more about what's going on, obviously. But uh, I think, um, I think, I think a lot of the community is getting a little restless. 
Yeah, what was the latest video? Um, a week ago, man. That was a week ago. I don't. It was all time hex, and then hex kept blowing up to almost fifty cents or past fifty cents, and then boom, right back down. Which, um, I don't know. I mean, it could start going up, going. It could start going up again and, and getting great gains. I mean, I do not, I do not doubt uh, what hex is capable of because it just keeps. It's it's a it's it is a beast, you know. So when I say that I think it's slowing down, I'm not. I'm not saying like that I don't believe in it. I'm just saying that I think it's it's going to kind of become more stable and and, and the, the gains are going to be more almost almost uh, predictable maybe you know. Whereas before the gains were completely unpredictable, they were just just boom you know rocketing and then big dips and then just right back up like like the dip like like it was. Some of the dip recoveries in the past were pretty incredible. They were you know fifty percent and then just like literally in a day or two boom right back up um so it's interesting to, to watch all this but i will say that like I, I i had talked about it before that um i was taking a look at vela's and waggy swap that one i got into i got into waggy swap 80x and it's still sitting there at like 70x 80x in one day two days so i um I was a hell of a lot more excited about that, obviously, because nothing was really going up. Yeah, so Wagyu Swap, which is basically going to be the first Dex on Vela's, which is basically a fork of Solana. Um, and and same with Vela's. I, I said that, keep an eye on it. Look, the price is going to go up. It did. Went from like four cents, five cents up to almost 20. But Wagyu, which is the Dex, actually um, had a higher market cap than Vela's. <laughs> and the reason why I say anybody's wondering why I say this is interesting to watch is because a lot of this group is highly invested. A lot of these projects are highly, a lot of these groups that are doing these projects are highly invested in Pulse. And when Pulse launches, you're going to see a very similar type of barrage of, of like um, apps, dap, dapps come in there. So Wagyu Swap is the, the DEX of Vela's and did really well, 64 cents got into it at uh, about a about a about a penny actually under a penny if you if you got into the um if you got in through the pad launch pad you were in just under a penny i believe so that's like a yeah close to a 70x well it was up to like 80 90x and i'll be honest i took a little bit of that and i added to my hex my hex stack it was almost like i got free hex I took a little percentage and then I, and I increased my hex stack. So everything grew. And um, uh, yeah, you know, that's why I'm excited for a pulse chain because I think we're going to see, you know, the same type of a kind of a thing and it could be better. It could be bigger. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. What are your thoughts on all this? I mean, that's, the, those are, those those are some uh, really nice gains, and I think that um, it's it's kind of like to have that um, foresight or just like uh, information on uh, which are some of the you know which are some of the cool projects that that are gonna pump is just like so crazy, um, and it's it's you 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 really have to have your finger on the pulse um for instance like i think you were telling me about these um these nfts that you know just like somebody uh like researched out of a forum and said like hey these nfts are going to be like you know really hot they're going to be free to mint well paying the freaking you know as free as ethereum will let us right which is mm -hmm. about 200 dollars um and then just like flip them for many e. I know two people that got into loot because somebody told them and said, look, it's kind of complicated. Let me show you how to do it. And then you can just mint, mint them until they run out. And they got in there and they minted. And I think one person got 30, the other person got 15 of these originals. And they sold way too early. And each one of them still made like a quarter mil. And like, I think it's like a week and a half. And, and they loot is just so crazy. It's just like, text that's it well they sold too early like in a few days but 
they kept on, they kept a little bit and the little bit that they kept was enough to make those mad gains for free. It was insane. I couldn't, I couldn't even talk to them for like a week. They were just glued to freaking all that was going on with this whole loot adventure thing. So like they literally checked out and then they finally were just like, they were just like, I can't, I, I, I can't do this. This is making me nuts. And it, 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 then they just sold everything. And they're like, and I'm happy. I don't care if it goes up another 10 X. They're just like, I, I can't mentally stay glued because it was so volatile, you know, it was all over the place. And then there was like all these things happening and that, 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 <laughs> but, but I mean, there's opportunities like that. If you hear about them, you, you can get into them for basically for free. But then what, but then what they did is then they jumped into a bunch of other projects after that and just lost, 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 lost. Not a huge amount, but you know, you have a tendency to think that if you can, you land one of them, that you're going to land a bunch more after that. And that was like one in a, the crazy thing is, is one of them, the, the one, the one that had 30, if he would have, if he would have got to the top, would have been, he would have had like over $5 million. <laughs> this is like in like a two week period. If he would, he would have been able to predict that, that, that they were going to go as high as they were going to go. Meaning you would have had to hold all of them and watch this crazy volatility and just, and just sit, sit tight. And then basically just plant that, that that's if you could have got, you know, got out. So there will be more. And speaking of NFTs guys, we've been talking about the savage network that we started. Um, we have a telegram group that I haven't been active because I've been kind of out of it and uh, gonna launch the first NFT, which is Captain Hex and the Hexicans, which uh, is an original art. We're not gonna do algorithmically. I think as far as NFTs go, there will always be a market. Yeah, there's, there's just a little website that I threw up just because I just, you know, I don't know, I think we just gotta have something, but you, you can check it out. But um, there's, yeah, there's, there's another image. I, I don't think I showed this image, but this is, um, this image is not, maybe, maybe we'll release this as an NFT, but this was just something that I had somebody, this is the Hex Overlord. So it's kind of like a spinoff of, of Richard Hart, but maybe somebody else who's a Hex Overlord. Maybe this is the, the God Whale. Maybe he's the God Whale. And uh, that, that was the idea was to kind of, kind of give it a little Dragon Ball Z feel to it. And uh, so, uh, yeah, that's the kind of artwork that we'll be kind of releasing. Oh, and we have a whole card set of 15 different characters that will be released. And it's all based on Hex. So I'll tell you some of the characters' names. We got, we got the big Hex. You can guess who that is. We're going to have Hexotica. We're going to have the Hexecutioner. We're going to have, what else is there? Actually, I think I might have it right here. These are some of the names of the characters that we kind of did some basically hex artwork, which will will be released soon. Honestly, I've never really done NFTs and sold them. So I've been watching a lot of tutorials just trying to see like what people say. So some of the characters are, we have the Hexalyzer, El Hexicano, Hexercizer. Hexorcist, you know, like the Hexorc Exorcist. Uh, Cyberhex, kind of like Cybersex. Uh, Hexaholic, Hex Soldier, Executioner, Hexurai, like Samurai, um, Hexaria, kind of like a kind of a spin off of Arya from Game of Thrones, but with an Asian twist. And uh, these are all going to be like characters on kind of like a trading card set that's basically just for Hex. It's, it's based on Hex. And then we'll move on to the next one. Maybe it'll be a Pulse set. Um, and the way this system's going to work is nothing will be guaranteed other than that you will own the NFTs. We're going to have three ways that the NFTs will be released. We'll do, we'll auction off the originals. So there's ones that will, there will only be one. So you will own that artwork like Captain Hex, which will come out um, maybe tonight or tomorrow. Um, and then there's going to be the trading cards, which will maybe have like, maybe there'll be like 50 to hundred of each. 
and then those will be basically set at a really a, a very cheap price. But some of them will give away for free, meaning that if you want to mint them, uh, whoever gets them can mint them first. So we'll probably release maybe two or three of those. And this is just just now, right? We'll have more being made. Um, and you can go mint an NFT for free uh, up to whatever, 50 to 100 of them. And then some of them will have just really small price tags on them because we have to recoup some of that to be able to keep producing more. Um, and then the original ones will be auctioned. So if those uh, do well, then that just means we'll be able to do more work, get more, more stuff created. Um, but I've been thinking about it and I think, you know, like I might not just stick to just hex and pulse. I was thinking of doing crypto ideas, like funny stuff, because I was thinking like, I had this idea, like, I was like, ah, oh, there's some funny characters out there and we should do some artwork on them. You know, like for example, Peter Schiff, I had this idea to do like a funny artwork of him. I don't want to give it away, but everybody knows that he's anti-crypto, anti-Bitcoin. So it'd be fun to do like a stab at him, kind of like something funny, you know, to kind of stab at him in his gold. So I have this idea of an image. So I think we're going to kind of expand out, but for now we're doing mostly like kind of like kind of hex stuff so the community can share it and, and then pull stuff. And then of course, if the community doesn't want to support it, whatever, then you know, we'll just move in a different direction. Like I said, people, people were get, get, get kind of weird on there. They're like, oh, you think you're just going to come into our community and steal our people? It's like, maybe some people tried to do that in the past, but I don't need that. I don't need to work that. I'm too creative for that kind of stuff. My cre creativity can take me anywhere, you know? So, as, so if they want to play nicely, then we can support them and be an asset. They don't want to play nicely? We'll take it take the value somewhere else. Um, but, uh, you know, like there was people like, why don't you just give them all away for free? You know, it's just like, why doesn't Richard Hart give everything away for free? Why does he get to make billion dollars? Well, personally for me, is I just want to be able to recoup so I can keep it going. You know, I want to be able to create more artwork and I can't just go, oh, yeah, we'll just take it out of our pockets and just do everything for free and work and just be like, here you go. You know, it's like, no, it's just not realistic. So, so if it's valued, then it'll continue. And if it's not valued, then maybe it'll explore into some, to some other areas. Now, the idea, once again, for anybody that's wondering is there will basically, it's evolving. This idea, this whole thing is evolving. But the idea is once Pulse Chain is released, there will be a token. Let's just call it Savage Token, Community Token, Governance Token, whatever you want to call it. It's not guaranteed it'll happen, but that's the idea. And it'll be airdropped every month to people that are holding the NFTs. So it'll be based on potentially three variables. How many NFTs somebody holds will mean they'll get a larger um, airdrop. The value of the NFTs that they hold um, based on the, in the first time it's sold. And then we were thinking about making it, making a multiplier on how many of a set you hold. So like, we're releasing 15 trading card kind of designs. And the more of those cards that you hold, you'll get like a multiplier of that set. And if you have the whole set, then you'll get even a bigger multiplier on the airdrop. And the idea is to, to divide a portion of the coins up over around a four or five year period so that every month there's an allocation that will be airdropped and it'll be based on these algorithms. I've already talked to developers and stuff to like, how can this be done in like an automated way or at least a semi-automated way? And then the idea is a portion of every NFT or artwork that gets put out will go back into the ecosystem to buy back some of the coins and burn them or create a staking ladder for the project down the road so that a, a portion of any, anything that comes in. And then on top of that, the way it's typically done, and I'm learning a lot about this, is uh, NFTs and artwork usually has royalties on it. So five to 10% royalty is common. So if you're an artist or you create something and then you create an NFT, um, it tracks the sale of the NFT. So as they go up in value, you can see how many hands that it transfers, which is really interesting. And every time it transfers and somebody sells it for a profit, the originator creator gets a royalty of five to 10% or what you can put whatever you want, 20%, 1% or 0%. 
but the idea is to, I think, do like a five or 6%. So the more we produce, the more potential royalties there will be for these cool, one unique, one of a kind designs, except for the sets. Those will be done in series. Um, and people might want to speculate on them. And like I said, the, 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 the idea is to either auction some, some will be very cheap, some will be free. Um, and if people start reselling and whatever, and we get known as Savage Network of the creators of really cool crypto, crypto culture artwork, that there will be a constant revenue, that portion of that will also be brought in to basically buy back buy off buy off some of the savage token and burn them or donate them or whatever so that, that that you have like basically utility and then and then there's more utility you can add so it'd be like an evolving project so if you guys want to be part of that wait around you can go to um savage network um uh telegram channel now I'm not like, this is not some project that we're trying to like rush out and we're trying to like, you know, stress and we're going to, you know, this is something we're doing for fun, but I think that has potential to grow into many things and it has potential to produce really cool art, artwork like you're seeing that will help grow the projects that we're involved in, Hex, Pulse, and maybe other projects because I'm getting a lot of good feedback and stuff because there's a lot of other people that are involved and that I've been basically sharing this idea with. And um, I'm getting really good feedback and it's just a unique idea. And I think that people can relate to really cool ideas. And there's already, I think we already have like 30 people in the Telegram just kind of waiting for the next piece of news. So the very first thing now is to basically launch the very first NFT, which is Captain Hex, which is a really cool, unique piece of artwork that I think I can, show it to you guys one more time let me do it really quick yeah well, i want me to stop sharing here real quick no 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 you can keep sharing it it's fine uh, oh, there you go am i sharing now no no uh your background changed oh yeah there you go so yeah stop sharing and it can put me up front yeah that's better so yeah this is the first one and I got one that I, I know the community is going to love. Well, I got two of them that I know they're going to love, but there's one that the community is really, really, really going to love, which we'll try to release a new one every couple of days. Once I get the system figured out, then I'll release more and maybe get more produced. And, um, and then, of course, uh, I want people's ideas. So in the Telegram, I'll start asking for um, ideas, which I get. I got lots of ideas coming in just from people that I talk with. So this isn't a hundred percent, just me, my ideas. This is a small group of people that but see that's captain hex and the hexagons and there's a story behind it. So it's like, we try to do some storytelling. So like the next couple of ones that come out, you you know, maybe what we'll do is we'll, I'll create like a vlog, a blog on the, the savage network website. And then every time we release one, we'll maybe do a little video clip that tells the story of that NFT, you know, because if you don't know what, if you don't know Hex or anything, you won't understand the humor behind why Captain Hex is wearing three watches on one hand, why he's got a Louis Vuitton teddy bear on his shoulder, you know, like why there's a guy <laughs> that's being trampled over that looks like another YouTuber that hasn't been seen for quite some time now and has been accused of, or maybe proven to be a bit of a scammer. So there's a story behind it. And, and I had a little bit of feedback where people are like, you know, that, that might, that might bring some neg negative feedback and we want everything to be positive. And I'm like, the name is savage. We get savage on your ass. So that's why it's like, we're going to do stuff. That's like, might be a little bit pushing the envelope. You know, because that's just how I am. It's like, you know, I like humor and sometimes you got to be a little vulgar or a little, uh, you got to push the envelope a little bit. So, and if uh, people don't like it too bad, because a lot of people love Crypt it. I think it's not hilarious. a stranger to that. Like, exactly. So. You're just toxic. No, it's like, you know what? That, that so-called toxicity is part of the entertainment. And, uh, 
you know, when we talk about like maximalism and stuff like that. So this NFT should be up soon. I will, um, uh, I guess you can, uh, I don't know. It's the first one. So I'll probably auction it for a few days or a week or something. And then that way I can tell people about it the next time. And then, like I said, it matter. It doesn't matter to me. So if you guys don't want to, you know, it'll start the auction at a very, uh, like a really low price. And then if it doesn't go up too much, then somebody will be get, get a really cool collectible for not for cheap. If it goes up, then, uh, then you will potentially have a higher valued thing that could get you a larger airdrop or um, it also might give us the ability to hire more artists or, or move into other types of artwork. So we have uh, multiple artists now. So you'll see some of the stuff come out that are totally different styles of artwork. Kind of like that Dragon Ball Z one that's on the website. That was a different artist. And um, I have another one who's a different kind of artist and, and potentially a, a bunch more people that uh, actually, I couldn't believe how many people wanted to do artwork for, for me. I had like 20 people, artists that, and a lot of them looked really talented um, that wanted to basically do artwork. You know, and that's their thing. They're artists, real you know, artists. And uh, so, yeah, anyways, that's what's happening. I'm gonna go back to none. And uh, yeah, so that's what's happening on that front. So our little kind of side project there, um, like I said, it's not in a rush and just trying to do cool ideas and so release them. So, um, you know, it's fun and it, it, there's no pressure. It's like, it's like, you know, if it's a complete flop and uh, I lose all my money, or we lose all our money for the people that have basically paid to kind of get some of this stuff going. So be it. It's nothing, you know, it's like, that's the thing is when you, when you, um, you know, you have ideas and stuff, you can't be afraid to try them out. Totally. You, you can't be afraid to, to just pull the trigger and go, you know, especially if you have a, an intention, like this is not like a scam intention, you know, you, you're going to see the artwork that we produced. And you're going to see the creativity behind it. And then, you know, wow, why, why is there going to be another token, blah, 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 because that just makes it more fun. Having a community token that can have uh, utility, it puts more value behind the NFT. And then, because that's one of the biggest problems with NFTs is there's nothing attached to value. So the holders of the NFT now have something of value, which can get, um, you know, airdrops or the ability to claim tokens every month. And if there's other projects that we partner with maybe we will we'll get an allocation of stat and we'll be able to just do more free airdrops or something it's all possible but it's kind of like you know the way that it's being done is it's it's not a big loss if it doesn't work you know because it's fun i enjoy working with the artists and coming up with like kind of creative ideas and i think the community is going to enjoy sharing it when they can start sharing it around and showing people especially some of the other ones that are being created they're pretty funny and um, it'll be interesting. And like I said, we can expand off into in all different realms. I, I, lo I love the idea of just sticking to crypto culture because crypto culture memes are so rooted into crypto culture that it's, it's destined to be successful just because of that. If you're doing funny things that are basically, ha basically ingrained into crypto culture, it, it's going to do well, you know, or some of them will do well. So, so keep an eye on Savage Network because it could uh, be a fun little side project. No, you know, it's not like, oh, we're going to start a project and become a coin that's going to compete with Bitcoin and da, 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 da. No, 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 no. This is something that's more based on and it's, its purpose. And that's basically just creating more memes, more artwork, more creative humor. And then, uh, you know, probably just grow with a small community and people that are into that and people that don't. They, they can still just appreciate what we produce. So there's that. Um, yeah, it's, it's all about just like creating content and like creating community, right? Because I think that's that's a big part of it. I, I remember this was a while ago, but there was this kind of like um, 
big investor, like um, it was a, a, a lady in like her 60s or something. And she heard about Bitcoin from like her rich friends or whatever. So she actually wanted to talk with me. And it's like, uh, you know, I was kind of like talking with her about it. And I mentioned the community. Um, and she said, why do you call it a community? Like she was very intrigued. She just on, didn't like, understand the it. Concept. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Like the concept, like community, like what do you mean community? <laughs> and I was like, well, it's just a group of people who are into the same thing and talk about it. And like, it was so alien to her. And I was like, you know what? I never thought about it that way uh, because you, like, I mean, there, there, there must be communities like about everything everywhere, but maybe not as focused on say Telegram or Discord or, or on certain platforms, maybe like on forums, I guess, but not like groups of it, at least not that I'm aware of. Maybe, you know, I'm completely mistaken and there's like, uh, you know, Ford enthusiasts, like, you know, mm. Telegram, so that I don't know. But that actually, uh, that I, I actually- Well, they do have that car people that are, but it's more into like aftermarket, you know, like you can yeah. find groups that are into Toyota, to Toyota Tacomas, or they're into the one specific car and then they're all about souping that car up, you know? Yeah. Communities are everywhere you know, online now. Yeah, that was. Community. Well, a crypto project, a crypto project is nothing without its community. It's the truth. There is a community behind every successful crypto project. Even the ones that shouldn't necessarily be there because they've never produced or delivered anything other than just a fork of something and they and, and you know and it's just hype FOMO but the, the community will keep that thing going if they if they believe in it or if there's a message behind it like the community could be strong I mean look at the hex community the hex community is super strong and the one of the things I've learned about the hex community is there's a lot of different types out there like you can't really stereotype it you know like the hexagons are very outspoken, the ones that think, you know, that are like, this is the best ever, but they're really a small percentage of the hex community. There's a lot of people that aren't very outspoken, that are very realistic. They, they you know, they, they're in a lot of other projects. They're not 100%, I believe, every single thing Richard Hart says, and he's God. No, there's a lot of people in the hex community that are just enjoying uh, you know, something that was designed well, that's doing well, but at the same time, they're not just all in and like, this is the only thing that will ever work. They're realistic and they're diversified, which I think, I think diversification is always a good thing. I mean, any money manager will tell you, you want to have a healthy diverse, you don't want to be over diversified, but you want to have a hedge, you know, you want to have protection and not necessarily everything, like a lot, a lot of you know, rich people, most rich people are diversified, not just in the market, but they're in many things, real estate, businesses, you know, precious metals, crypto, bonds, um, currencies, you know, things like that. And I, you know, that's just part of strategy and, and learning from mistakes and stuff like that. You're diverse. I know you're diversified. I'm diversified. And I, honestly, most, most, a lot of the people that I talk to and that are in Hex, they're diversified too. But a lot of them, like you, will say, Hex has been a beast and it's been my best gainer. Awesome. You know, power to you for getting, for gaining on that. I missed out on the Hex thing, but guess what? I'm getting the, I'm, I've got in early enough to still get good gains. I went in when I showed you, and then like the week, a few days later, I went in again, and then I went in a little bit more with, with some of the gains. And uh, uh, yeah, man, I, got, I, can't, I can't really talk bad. I just like to be realistic, that's all. And sometimes people think that that's like fudding or being negative, but it's like, you know, asking the questions, the real questions, because as they say, everything, everything that's good is good until it's not. BitConnect wasn't a scam until it was. And then it was the biggest online, I think, scam like 
at the time, period. But before that, every single YouTuber, most the most popular YouTubers were, were promoting BitConnect, if you remember that in 2018, 17. The top, a lot of the top YouTubers were basically shilling BitConnect. They didn't know. They thought it was real because they weren't the creators and the inventors of it. They believed in it. Why? Because the gains went up for a year straight. Mad gains for a year straight. Everybody was getting rich. Because, you know, I mean, it was a scam because they lied and said they had a trading bot, which didn't exist. And it was really just a Ponzi scheme. But they hit it well. You know, they hit it under, under a story. And I'm not saying that X is a scam because it's all there for the same, but everything is good until it slows down or until it's not. And then people have a tendency to look for the next, we call it shiny object syndrome, right? Constantly looking for the next shiny object or next, you know, interesting thing that could be the next big gainer. I, I, I'm, I'm actually not like that. Like, you know, like it might sound like I'm, I'm jumping around, but stuff that I get into is stuff that I have, I have Intel, I have Intel on. I prefer to be safe. I prefer to be in something like Hex that's going to just give me these nice gains over time. That's actually how I am. I don't like to jump in a lot of stuff and I don't, but you know, when I, you hear me jump into something or I talk about it, uh, there's a good chance that maybe I know something and I don't go all in, you know, it's, 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 it's always like, kind of like it's strategy, right? It's like, it's like the ADX or right. That, I didn't go all in. Of course, I wish I did, right? <laughs> I wish I, wish I would have just put everything into it and went ADX. But um, the idea is you put into something where you have some good intel or good research, knowing that you might lose or it might just go to nothing, but it's an asymmetric bet. So, and that's, uh, you know, and if it does give you those big returns, then it was worth it. So a small amount can turn into a large amount if you diversify properly. And when Hex first came out, that was that story. People were getting into Hex and everybody was like going, that's a scam. And then there was believers and they were the ones that risked it and they were rewarded handsomely to massive gains. So that's that. I don't know, anything else to talk about? I don't think so. I mean, we cover a lot. Um, NFTs, mad games. A little bit about what's going. We haven't really talked about like what's going on in the, the the pulse. But I'll be honest. I have when I was going through all this kind of going to the and get sick. I was kind of unplugged. I mean, I would I pop in every once in a while where I can just listen. But even putting these headphones on was causing me to feel extra dizzy because it was putting pressure on like my neck and all this area. You know, because these. these these noise canceling headphones actually are pretty snug. And then I read that noise canceling headphones cause some people to get really dizzy, which was interesting. It can cause a vertigo. I was having crazy vertigo. Yeah, I mean, because it's just like too confined. So you're like- Well, I think it's also something to do with the way the noise canceling works. Cause you can feel it. It's, it's like kind of like, and it can kind of, I guess it can mess with some people's uh, inner ear, I guess. I learned all about ears. I know all about inner ears and the crystals. And <laughs> it's funny how like, if you have a problem, you like, you become an expert on, <laughs> on whatever it is that you think the problem is. So, all right, guys. Um, thank you guys for tuning in and watching. We always like to hear your guys' stories and uh, we'll keep this going. You know, like I said, this channel for us is just something we enjoy doing. It kind of makes us feel connected to the community. <laughs> and that's why we basically say what we want to say. We talk about what we want to talk and we're not just shill machines. So if something looks good or something, or there's a question, we talk about it. And, uh, you know, we get sometimes people don't like it, the comments, but that's okay. It's part of, it's part of how it is. So we try to keep it real. Um, and uh, of course, it's not just pulse and hex. We try to talk a little bit about other stuff too in the market. We used to be generalized into Bitcoin, and, you know, and, but it's like there's a million, million YouTubers that just talk about Bitcoin out there and, and do a technical analysis. <laughs> All right, guys. So we're going to go ahead and end this stream.
Uh, hopefully I can show you guys another NFT um, presentation or something, the next one, and we'll just kind of start releasing them. Boom, 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 boom. And uh, I'm kind of glad that I waited because it's given me a chance to kind of learn more and see different ways that things are being done and be and kind of like think about things and kind of process and then bounce it off other people. So like I said, no guarantees, no promises other than if we release an NFT and you get it, it's yours. Um, all right, guys, crypto jumpstart, jumping out.